That was kind of brave of me, but uh, worked out. Hello, I'm Arima, and this is Spiritfall. Spiritfall is a unique game. This is the only roguelike platform fighter that exists. And um, it just came out in a 1.0 release. We've been playing it a little bit on stream, and uh, I wanted to get an episode of this out onto YouTube as a video. So we're going to jump in today with uh, one of the newer weapons, the alternate form of the scythe, which came out like pretty late into the early access. But this the drill here, I think, is actually like pretty much grand, brand new. And if you're wondering what I mean by a platform fight, fighter road like if you've ever played something like Smash Brothers or Brawlhalla, you do actually have your directional attacks, you have, you know, neutral, down, all that kinds of stuff. You know, it, it is very much like Brawlhalla. Then you have your launchers, which the launcher on this thing is pretty cool. It actually transforms into a different weapon with slightly different attacks. And it transforms back each time you do a heavy. So you can literally combo between and then like switch back and it has this really cool multi-hit thing that it does with most of its attacks that means that i kind of want to go ahead and get a a build going that will be like really good on sazvet so i'm hoping for the solesh spirit which is like the firebird spirit if you've never seen this game before at all Basically, imagine what would happen if you combined something like Brawlhalla or Smash Brothers with Hades. So you have each of your spirits, there's a bunch of them, and each of them have a bit of a theme of what they do. This is Mishfed, the ice bear. He's all about um, freezing stuff and being kind of defensive and uh, just generally frost in general, I guess. Kind of like he's their CC spirit. Um, I don't really want freezing attack because this will replace my primary attack damage type with frost and it'll lock me out from doing celeste's fire attack so i want i want to avoid that for now but we can go ahead and take the blizzard bolt bomb which replaces my bolt skill on my triangle with a ice bomb now and then as far as the actual level goes we have this pretty obvious looking ftl map if you've ever seen slay the spire ftl should be i mean it's a road like this should all be familiar to you guys at this point we are going to see what we can do about... Oh, yeah. The combos on this thing are just honestly fantastic. It, like, whenever you first pick it up, it feels like a very simple weapon. And then you start playing around with the diversity between um, the two different forms and using the drill in order to, like, bounce things around and stuff like that. And it becomes really, really fun. What I was grabbing there was that was some meta currency that from that statue and the luminous gem basically just it's like a pomegranate from Hades. It upgrades one of my skills. These things allow us to sacrifice some HP, get a benefit. Uh, that was some reroll dice and may the snow melt for you, revealing rarities hidden in plain sight. Oh, yeah, it upgraded one of my things. The little message there gives you a clue as to what is going to be going on. This is one of the things that got added with the 1.0 release, is there are now mini-bosses in each stage. If you kill the mini-boss, it's going to give you some blessings. Well, you if you don't kill the mini-boss, your run's over. But if you go for the mini-boss, it's going to give you some blessings that specifically are aimed to try and get you synergies faster. Which I think is a really cool mechanic. This mini-boss is relatively easy. I say that, but I am honestly failing right now because... Trying to, trying to kind of keep a running commentary of what's going on at the same time. And Honestly, I think the drill spear, the drill part of the spear was the worst choice there. I need some speed. Yeah, here we go. Wow, I took way more damage there than I really should have. 
Okay. Um, so we have Ice Shards, which is whenever a frost-inflicted enemy is hit by your attack or launcher, release a piercing ice shard at a random direction. Or actually, let's take the Voltaire Blink Dash. Basically, it turns my dash into a blink. And again, very Hades-like. If you look down in the bottom left screen, we have all of our basic attacks, um, our bolts and our dash. And as we get blessings, it'll start overriding and replacing those with the blessing from that particular thing. So it is something to keep in mind is that um, you can you kind of you kind of set up your run rather rather quickly that way. So you want to if, if you have something specific you're going for, you want to make sure and uh, hold open that slot because getting offered something in a slot that you already have filled is pretty rare in my experience. Let's see, we're going to go ahead and steal from this guy. You can steal from this guy up to twice. But if you if you do it more than twice, Avarice will in fact be punished. Um, I wouldn't suggest trying to find out what happens. It sucks. Ooh, lightning. Let's go with some lightning today. A Voltaic Launcher. That'll mean that my drill head will cause Electrify over and over and over again. That might be pretty good. It also gives me a bunch of attack speed. Let's do it. Hollow Ground will heal me. If you don't have these, it's because uh, there's some meta progression in the game that is, again, it's very Hades like. You can kind of like pay this guy to add stuff to your dungeon. Um, and those get unlocked pretty quickly. And then hidden rifts are probably one of the last mechanics I'm going to have to explain. It is a proper platform fighter fight against one of these guys. Instead of having HP, they have percentage and all you gotta do is knock them off the side at the bottom of the screen you'll see that i have three different rewards and the goal is that if i get all three of them before if i get three kills before the time runs off then i'll get all three rewards keep in mind that your dash has a cooldown so if you get stuck really far off stage there just keep dashing man just keep dashing <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, lightning strike. This is basically Pikachu from Smash Brothers. Huge fan of that attack. Huge fan of that attack. I don't really want dousing attack. So we'll look at jaws and hydration. Drinking from a regional shrine's fountain also increases your max health. Effect is doubled if you recover to full health while drinking. And deal more damage when hitting from directly below. We'll take the jaws because... I don't know. I don't like taking damage enough to actually go for the regional shrine every time. And we don't have any money, so we're going to go ahead and skip that. On to the first boss. This chick has this yellow HP bar, which is uh, armor. While she has it going, she cannot be juggled. But once it's broken, you can juggle her all you want. Unless you are bad like me. Oh my god. Really gotta focus up on these bosses, unfortunately. And I don't mean unfortunately, I mean like, uh, unfortunately for me, because, well, I was trying to do commentary. Nope. That was actually too fast there. <clears throat> That right there is one of the examples that I was talking about of uh, interesting combos you have. So I actually threw my drill at her, yeah. got a multi-hit with the drill, and was able to like come back around with the spear. It's a very interesting weapon. Very interesting weapon. And then the Viridian, or uh, the start of the Viridian Trail here, you're going to get a Shrine Keeper, which lets us spend the, the essence that we've gotten, which is the bottom right corner. The essence is gotten from maintaining combos and not getting hit, stuff like that. The major enh enhancements here are going to be specific to the weapon, and then the miners are just going to be generic things. And these are upgrades that last specifically this run. Okay, so we have Armor Piercer. An attack de your attack deals plus 40% damage to shielded enemies. Breaking shields advances all cooldowns by 
That's actually pretty good. Shielded enemies become pretty common. Or 15% damage and cooldown speed while in spear mode. Um, We're going to go for this one. Unfortunately, we weren't doing very well in that first area, so we don't have a lot of them to going for us. Let's see. What do we want? What do we want? I kind of really wanted Slash, which is the red spirit. It's not shown up a single time. So in trade, I think I'm going to go for Kellerman, who is about crits. And since we're hitting a ton, I feel like crits are kind of a general, generally good idea. You know, I forgot that I had a uh, lightning bolt that entire time. Should really use it more often. Running attack? Yeah, so running attack will make it so that our normal attack now does weakness on hit, which gives us basically a very good crit chance. Then we'll take Helaman again. I think I need to cancel my attacks more often. That'll help a bit. That was a flawless room, finally. Jeez. So we have occultation, occultation which uh, is basically whenever they're overlapped, we do more damage to enemies. We have Entropic Attunement. Landing non-critical hits on wounded enemies increases your crit chance up until the fact that I crit. Wounded non-boss enemies immediately lose a portion of their health upon taking a critical hit. Ooh. I think we're going to go for Entropic Attunement first. So that increases my chance to crit every time I don't crit. And then we'll take a Luminous Gem. That will... Upgrade one of my skills. Very nice juggle. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so 2% crit per hit until I crit. Very nice. Ooh, Nets Spirit Blessing you will have will have increased rarity. Okay, what's my Nets Spirit Blessing that I'll get? Um... If I grabbed this, I could go for the mini boss, and I'd have a one in three chance of getting something really nice. We'll go ahead and grab that. The far left one there is always free and is always a random. It also can be bad, so just something just can keep in mind with her shop there. But she kind of gives you uh, consumable buffs, I'll say. I say consumable because, well, they all, all last like for like five floors or six floors or something like that. Perfectly timed that in order to bomb myself. Perfectly timed it to bomb myself. I'll take some of your offered meta progression currency and check out our relic. Relic is, uh, you get to have, where is it? Three of them. There we go. And they do your road like things. Um, deal 6% bonus damage for every 100 dust you carry. That's pretty good. And then because it's higher level, it has two random modifiers on it. Increased shield damage and increased dash damage. I'll take it. Sounds good. So this is going to be a guaranteed rare against this mini boss here. This guy sucks. He summons multiple enemies, but he is the actual only enemy you can fight. So you have to kind of try and ignore the rest of them as best as you can. Oh, I'm, I'm locked on the wrong one. Which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. It helps if you group them up like that. Ooh. It's a pretty hard mini boss, I would say. Uh, I don't think I've ever got it on that one without taking damage. So let's see. We have Ice Shards, which is Frost Inflicted. 
enemies hit by your attack or launch of release, uh, release piercing ice shards. That's not going to happen that often because my only frost that I have on my build right now is my bolt. Um, so that's not super reliable. Size of conflict is you deal more damage in a room based on the amount of enemies waves spawned. Mm, that could be pretty good. While multiple enemies are nearby, you have increased cooldown speed and a permanent stack of Electrify. That is actually fantastic. Electrify gives us more attack speed, so happy to have it. Ah. Yeah, that's a roaming mini boss that exists in this game. I am not happy to see it uh, because he's actually kind of hard. So what we're going to do, since I'm not doing amazing on this run, is we're going to head to the left here to this Vitality Crest, and then he'll have to choose between that Kellerman, that pink wolf, or that uh, yellow bunny. And whichever one he chooses, I'll choose the other one. And we'll just kind of leave him behind. I hate to do it, but um, I've not been the best showing of skill here. And he's a very hard boss, so I would just die. I kind of suggest that you fight him a couple times at first, get used to him. But outside of that, I would only, honestly only fight him myself if I actually feel like the run's going well enough to fight him. Because he can be very hard. Very, very hard. Oh! Here is a shrine that lets me... It offers me the chance to get rid of a blessing for a bunch of money. Um, I like all three of those blessings, though, so we're going to keep them. So he went for the bunny. That's actually fine. I wanted the uh, Kellerman, the uh, crit dog anyways. and use some of our terrain to advantage here. Shoot that guy with his own little minions, and voila. Grab some more meta progression. Let's see what he's got offered to us. Um, absolute magnitude increases our essence multiplier. Wolf Punish makes it so that whenever an enemy misses us, we do more damage. But Deep Rend is a percent HP reduction every time we get a crit. We should just go for that. Ooh, we have enough money that we can just buy a bunch of stuff in the shop here. We'll grab even more Kelemen. Dealing bonus crit, dam crit damage per stack of wound applied. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. And, I mean, we're here. Might as well grab the Holy Dice for extra rerolls. So, this boss can be a bit of a trouble for, ever, for, for people. You have bested us once, but you will never defeat the might of the Order. We will fight to our very last breath. My suggestion for this boss is you're fighting all three of them at once. I would take out the Archer first every single time. The Archer can be a problem. One other thing to keep in mind is that... After they attack, they can be juggled. But only for a few seconds. And if you drop them, they will go back to being super armored. They also keep their HP between phases. So it's a good idea to do some damage to all of them. Finish off the archer right there. And now these two guys are going to power up. Ah, I would not greedy. See if I can juggle this guy. Ah, almost got it. Oh, there he goes. He is down. Now only this man left. And he kind of likes to spam that attack right there, which will be the end of him.
I thought he had gotten me for about a half a second there. It's... It wasn't supposed to end like this. Eh, it always ends like that. It gives us an extra essence to use on the upgrade shrine right here. And we move on. Let's see what we got. Any sweet spot you hit during spear mode deals 50% damage and shield damage. Ooh. Your drill head does extra damage for each enemy hits while moving. Uh, we're definitely going to be going for that. Sweet spots on the spear mode. Hmm. Hmm. Or we can get some, like, launcher and attack damage and attack damage versus bosses. I think we're going to go for launcher damage and boss damage because the launcher is that. Basically my heavy. And I use it quite often. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I think I'm going to head for the relic chest because we still only have one relic out of possible three. Oh, come on. I kind of hate these guys because they just have this little aura around them. And it can very easily just basically do like contact damage to you. Reduces damage from explosions by half. When hit by an explosion, you gain increased damage. Mm, okay. It also has attack damage on it, which is going to be the thing that I care about more. And then we're going to go for Yamphis over here. Yamphis is the spirit that focuses on like wall splats and knockbacks and stuff like that. But he also has some really good like secondary just passive blessings that I'm a huge fan of. I don't really wall splat a lot with this weapon. I just miss like so many times. Oh, that was a cool little thing. 276 on a... Oh, it was a crit. 276 on a spear hit, though. It's kind of crazy. Up and down attack, do more damage. That's pretty good. I do my down attack all the time. Oh, those are grounded up and down attacks. Mmm. I'll have to consider that. But we do have the Jaws attack, so I think we're going to take that. So now this attack right there and this attack are stronger. Let's see. Okay, let's get one more Relic, because I really would like a good Relic, please. Sit 76. Hot damn. I had a much higher crit chance because of the fact that uh, I had a whole bunch of wounded on them. So we're getting those crits off pretty often now. While grounded launchers deal increased damage and while airborne attacks deal increased damage. There we go. There's a freaking relic for you. Okay. Um, We'll take the vitality crest. Getting some more HP right now would be fantastic to be honest. May have got me from a million miles away. Let's juggle this guy at the end here. Okay, okay, okay. Game's not easy. Game is not easy. But we got this. I think we can make it pretty far with this run. Pretty sure. Okay, let's see. Mishfed will be CC. Amphis will be knock. Shambora will be kind of like tankiness. Mm. Let's go for a little bit of Shambora. See what they get offered. Plus, there is a good reason to grab a diversity of blessings and from a diversity of things because you'll get offered synergy blessings, which combine two different spirits together. And some of them are pretty damn good. 
I think you have a limit of how many synergy blessings you can have, but I don't remember what the limit is off the top of my head. So I would say only take the ones that you actually like. Don't just take them because they're synergy blessings. There we go. And those crits do a ton. An absolute ton. All healing sources are more effective. Gain plus 10 max HP. Yes. Not even going to read the other ones. Just yes. My lightning, which hits really hard on a good day, just crit. Absolutely disgusting. I kept trying to do my lightning bolt, but I think I got canceled and or my lightning bolt got canceled at some point and I like lost the cooldown for it. There we go. Let's see if there's any blessings we want to get rid of. Mm, once again, I actually really like all three of those, so we're gonna hold on to them. Um we're doing really well with the crit stuff, so we'll take more Kelamin. Even though this weapon doesn't have any, like, inherent combos, by that I mean, like, it doesn't, like, none of its attacks have multi-attacks or anything like that, it, because of just, like, how it's set up, you can, you can get some pretty cool shit going with it still. I wasn't thinking that I would going, was going to like this weapon the first time I picked it up, but I've kind of become hugely a fan of it. Hyper critical. When you deal critical damage to non-bosses, there's a chance to instantly slay them. Or we get more critical damage for each blessing you have with at least one luminous gem. How many do we have? We have two. So it'd be 8% more crit damage. I think I'm going to take... Yeah, I'll take the more crit damage. Bosses are pretty hard, so grabbing blessings to help against bosses is a very good idea. Okay, so we'll take the healing right away. And then we have enough for both, so we'll just go ahead and take both blessings. Here we go. Here's a synergy. After choosing a blessing to upgrade with a luminous gem, random leftover option is also upgraded. Ooh. That's actually really good. So basically each luminous gem counts for two. And then Mishved just gave us cooldown speed. So we have cooldown re a speed reduction as well. Yeah, I didn't read the other ones, but the cooldown speed reduction is just very, very good. Heretic Warlock. This guy can be a jerk. He kind of wants you to take your time as far as the boss goes. But at the same time, if you take your time too well, you also get hit. So it, this this guy is a uh, balance. And that guy in the background, that's Stell Tony. That's at least what I call him. Stell Tony sucks. The real reason Skeletony Tony sucks is because, well, you just get so much going on that you can get distracted from attacks because you're literally fighting two people at once, right? So. Ah! See, I was focusing on Skeletony, Tony and this man hit me with uh, some sort of necrotic wave thing at the same time. We are doing so much damage though, holy crap. I've never done this much to this man before. Oh, he's dead. He is dead! Hell yeah. I think that's the first time I've killed the Heretic Warlock on screen between both stream and YouTube. I killed him a few times in my old series, though. I actually have some wins in my old series, but that was before the 1.0 release, so it doesn't count. Let's move on. Frigid Veil. This is whenever the normal enemies start to get hard. Well, let's see what we can get here. We have first side attack or side attack in drill mode. 
produces a spectral drill head, more sweet spot on the short spear, or when your drill head begins burrowing, it creates a large magnetic force that draws enemies in. Hmm. I think I'm going to grab these two. And then grab extra launcher dip. Oh, we, we're out. Uh, This is going to be my last one, so I'll just spend and grab the uh, extra damage release. Let's see. Not the best offering on um, spirits here. I'm going to take the maximum amount of Luminous Gems. So that means we go up the middle here. And I haven't got anything from Zalvoon. But weirdly enough, I think I'm just going to grab a Zalvoon Blessing here. Because Zalvoon has some pretty good passives too. taking bad hits. There we go. Base dodge chance. There we go. Zavoon has this backstab dodge kind of rogue thing going on for him. Honestly, just spending some time running from these guys because that's a lot of enemies and having two elites that I couldn't uh, couldn't stagger was a come on, weird like fish thing it was dangerous. So this enemy, this little monolith that's that I'm fighting over there on the right, he actually has a floating eyeball. I was trying to show it off earlier, but. Uh, Oh, come on, come on. And you have to combine them. Okay. I don't know what the fuck just happened there, but they're all dead, so I'm fine with it. But you have to combine both the monolith and the eyeball in order to be able to do damage to him. So if you run into that one of those guys in the Frigid Veil and you're wondering why he's not taking any damage, well, there you go. I swear I threw that in another direction, but that's okay. Oh, come on. Oh, jeez. Super elite there. Extra cooldown reduction is pretty much saving my life right now. Let's see. Running attack does extra damage. And then where did the second one go? The second one went to Entropic Attunement. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna take another luminous gem. Our luminous gem synergy is pretty bonkers. That was sick. Just carry them into each other like that. There we go. Finally combined them. And we got him dead. Woo! That was hard. We got this, though. Sort of. I mean, we're taking a lot of damage, but that's fine. Um, hypercritical. 
or open wounds or zealous heart we'll take zealous heart and it grabbed open wounds hell yeah So if we go to Hidden Rift, it will give us both the Mishrid Blessing on the left and the Sharborough Blessing on the right. So we're definitely going to take this. There we go. Had to concentrate for a second. <laughs> Trevoro. Whenever you recover health, gain bonus damage until your hits. When you open a relic chest, restore some health. Or in the each combat room, the first instance damage you take is reduced. Let's go for that one. Frost enemies re uh, receive a burst of damage if they don't attack for three seconds. That's interesting. So I have to juggle them for three seconds for that. Deal increased damage per nearby enemy inflicted with frost. Eh. When you slay frost inflicted enemies, they deal increased damage. Eh. Let's reroll, actually. You deal increased damage. Oh, that's the same thing. When you wall splat enemies with frost, they deal damage and inflict frost nearby. Mm. We'll go with cold presence because we do, f I mean, we do have this, so we will frost sometimes. But that wasn't ideal. I just don't want to waste my rerolls on it. I really want the Vitality Crest, but the Luminous Gem is just so good for our build right now. I kind of hate these, uh, these fish guys. They remind me of the grasshoppers from the first level, but now they fly. What jerks? Uh, all your cooldown speeds are faster? Hell yeah. We'll take that. And then it went to Constellation. So we also have increased crit damage. A very highly upgraded build. We'll take Sharboro here for some tankiness. Having two drills with the spectral drill thing is kind of amazing. Not gonna lie. was kind of brave of me, but uh, worked out. I knew I was going to have two drills, so I just dove in. Dove in. Uh, camping. Deal more damage the farther away they are. That seems pretty good for this. And now we're going to get some HP back from this. But at least it's something. Um, reduced incoming damage from all sources. Yes. Well, let's see if we can do some god dodge chance off of this guy. Neutral attack deals more damage. I'm going to reroll because I have five rerolls until we get some dodge chance here. Dodge, uh, increased dodge chance after dashing. There we go. We dash all the time, so that'll be fine. Okay. I have only fought this boss a handful of times because he was added pretty late in the early access. So, um... This is one of the harder bosses in the game. It's not the newest boss, 
There is apparently a new one in the early access, but uh, I'm going to do my best, guys. I'm going to do my best. Omen Forged. I've been waiting. It does not matter how far you've come. You cannot stop the order. He seems tired. So let me put you out of your misery. You seem tired. Oh, he has a backswing. Okay. Oh, it's a grab attack. Shit. Oh, Jesus. Okay. When he does that, he teleports around. Got it. That almost got me. That did get me. I tried to dodge, but there was just, like, no effect there. A new attack. Eight seventeen, hot damn. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Oh my gosh, we got him. Holy crap, twelve HP to spare. Oh, jeez. No, please. You can still turn back. As far as the storyline, by the way, guys, I have no idea what's going on. The Omen Forge basically want... Uh, they, they want us to, uh... basically restore the world. Supposedly, the, um... the, the spirits were, uh, uh... protecting a whole bunch of the world, and there's a cult that is giving people immortality through Blight. Looks like the last shrine here is destroyed. No more fire keepers. And this is officially a new area. I have never been here because this is what's added with the 1.0. Oh, I don't like that. In bullet hell mode here. I like that I can knock all the enemies off too, though. That's pretty cool. Okay, the enemies attack a lot faster now. There's very little time between combos. This is like a gauntlet. Do I not get any healing or anything? I don't know what that did. Ow. Apparently it explodes and turns into a bullet hell. to get it so I'm not really supposed to kill them as much anymore I mean we can but we want to knock them off and the lower the HP they, they have the farther they seem to go 
Oh, thank God, that's a shot. Okay, we're gonna take some healing. We have 400, so... We'll take this, because this will give us farther knockback. Potentially. Get a reroll. I'm hoping for some knockback. Isolated enemies with no en enemies nearby receive bonus damage. No. Uncharted Waters is bonus damage for each room cleared. That'll be helpful either way. And then we'll take this guy. Frost inflicted enemies receive a burst of damage if they don't attack for three seconds. We'll try it. I don't think it's going to come up. Probably should have just taken Sharboro there. Akrasi. Omen Forged. Oh, is this the final boss? Shit. This is the first time seeing it, both you and me. Uh, her little cauldron there at the bottom... I pointed at my screen. I'm like an idiot. Her little cauldron there at the bottom of the screen has uh, all of the symbols of the different spirits on it. That's kind of cool. Omen Forged. We made it last. The spirits turn so swiftly on those of us who have dedicated our lives to them. What unreliable, mischievous beings. They don't have any answers for us anymore. No resolve. There's nothing left. Nothing except the things we swore, swore to protect. Protecting him, that was my responsibility. Yet, I have yet to abandon my duty, and I have no intent on doing so. Do you hear me, spirits? I will never t let you take me away. Take this away from me. Wish I knew what was going on, lady. Oh, Jesus. Uh, just giving a moment here to uh, see what her attacks look like. Wonder what happens if I bring her out. Can I sight read this? Oh, she just takes a bunch of damage. Okay. And then comes right back. Oh my gosh. The the orbs there started so late in her attack, I honestly just wasn't seeing them. She's kind of hard to approach. Okay. I dashed into them. Oh my gosh. We got so freaking close, guys. We got so freaking close. Well, I guess that means you're just going to have to come back and watch some of my other videos. But uh, I'll do a quick run through for people who are still here of what the town looks like. So you have your meta progressions here. Each uh, tree is associated with a certain spirit. And if you unlock enough of them, then you get a mask. I'm currently wearing Zalvu's mask, who is the little ninja rodent over here. You have the scrolls that you can spend and all of these upgrade things in your run itself. So like, for example, I can get the hollowed ground and the frigid bale, which will give me a monument that I can use in order to restore some HP. 
You have all 10 of your weapons and a blacksmith beneath them who both unlocks your weapons the first times through for mostly combat runes and also gives you various, uh, I'd say buffs isn't quite the, uh, the right word, but it's more of like it gives them other things that they can do. Um, none of these are, in my opinion, like straight flat improvements. You don't have, you won't find any percent HP or percent damage in here or anything like that. And then lastly, you have your masts. I currently only have three of them collected. Kelamin, Selesh, and Zalvoon. And they give you a passive for the run. So Zalvoon was giving me 1% extra damage every single time we cleared our room without taking damage. And that is Spiritfall. I hope that wasn't too confusing, too weird. I kind of just wanted to jump into a run and show, not tell, how good this game is. Because if I just sat here and explained it to you, it would be boring as fuck. But I have been Arima, and that has been Spiritfall. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and goodbye.